We got Juicy J, Julian Arosa back here on the program. Is going to be back in action on June nineteenth. Julian, how's how's it going, man? Oh man, it's going absolutely fantastic. I've had a a long training camp, but I'm I'm super ready to get in there. And uh, thanks for uh, having me on again. Of course, uh, it's like a ritual before every uh, fight. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It seemed like you got plenty of notice for this fight. It must be nice because I know a lot of your UFC fights have been short notice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, with uh, Sean Woodson on my. You know, my third stint in the UFC, uh, Sean was three days notice, and uh, obviously that worked out good for me. And then um, Nate Landwehr was five weeks, and I actually kind of prefer that kind of a uh, of a fight camp where uh, I know a little about a month, you know. And uh, but this one, it's been three and a half months altogether. I'll I'll, uh, I'll have for the, the fight camp before the fight. So, um, you know, it's you know it can be positive and negative. I mean, there's more positives. Obviously, you you know what's going on. You know you know, the date and you have all this time to get ready and stuff, but sometimes I can drive some people crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, it's about just, um, not trying to, uh, overdo it and hurt myself, you know, like, uh, you know, I like to overdo it with like, you know, cardio and conditioning and stuff like that. But, you know, trying to make sure that I'm not like, uh, putting too many hard hours into where, you know, I might be getting injured. And a, a bit of news since the last time we spoke, uh, your good friend Misha Tate is going to be back uh, fighting in the UFC. How cool is that? Because I know you guys have known each other for a while. Yeah, you know, she uh, she had yeah, – it's funny because, like, uh, she hadn't said anything yet to anybody. And uh, she started training, like, a little bit more often than I than she was. And, I, you know, she had a couple of kids. And I figured, you know, maybe she got some free time. She wanted to come, you know, come back into the gym and get some training in. But I figured – it started getting a little more serious, and I figured there was a little bit behind it. And uh, uh, one of our friends, mutual friends, Gustavo uh, Lopez, was standing yeah. there, and, like, I was like, "Hey, I was like, is Misha like trying to fight again?" And he just like he gave me a little giggle, and he didn't say nothing, but I just assumed that she was trying to fight. And uh, you know, sure enough, uh, you know, a month later, she uh, she it, it came out that she uh, had a fight in the line. So uh, I'm happy for her. I think uh, you know she still has a lot to offer the sport. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how she falls. Uh, falls into, into line with the uh, with the girls that are uh, in the division, um, you know, coming back after all these years. Do you see her training a lot in the gym, or does she kind of do her own thing with her own training partners and stuff? Uh, yeah, she trains a lot in the gym, uh, but she does, you know, uh, she's, you know, she's, they, the girls obviously, you know, try to mix it up with each other. They try to find certain days where, you know, it's just the girls training um, because they want to get those realistic looks. And then uh, obviously they'll mix it up with the guys as well on a, uh, the pro fight uh, classes as well. So um, they kind of intermix, but uh, I think mostly they try to, uh, you know, you know, I think she tries to just go around her schedule. You know, she's got two kids, you know, uh, pretty young, and um, I'm sure she has a lot on her plate. So, you know, wherever she can get it, she probably gets it in. Let's talk about your opponent, Seng Wu Choi, 9-3 record. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, I, you know, obviously, uh, he's a long, lanky guy like myself. Um, he's got a solid record. He's two and two in the UFC, but the two guys he lost to are solid dudes. Um, so you can't really take away from uh, him from there. Uh, and the guys he beat are, you know, decent. Uh, obviously, Yusuf is a really uh, solid opponent that he beat his last going. Um, I think, I think the problem that Yusuf had with him was just his size. You know, uh, he's big, long, lanky like I am, and so it's hard to take some of these guys down like us. Um, and so I think that was Yusuf's issue. He wasn't able to get, get him to the ground as often as he wanted to. And, uh, for me, I think, uh, I'll have a little bit, uh, of an advantage just because, uh, I mean, compared to some of his other opponents, because I'm tall and lanky as well. So, um, uh, I know, you know, he seems like a solid dude. Uh, I think I have a lot more experience than him, not only just in fighting and, uh, and just in training in general. Um, uh, and I think, I think I have some advantages, uh, you know, kind of anywhere the, the fight goes, you know, I obviously he's kind of a stand up guy like me. Um, but I think my ground game is a bit better than his, uh, my wrestling is probably a bit better than his, uh, overall MMA, uh, striking, I think is better than his. Um, I think his, like his standard, like kickboxing striking is probably better than mine, but you know, we're not kickboxing, we're at MMA sparring or we're MMA fighting. So, uh, I think I have a ability to mix things up and, um, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to uh, going in there and really mixing up the entire bag of tricks and uh, and, and make him guess, you know, instead of just trying to stay at range and try to have a kickboxing match with him. Anything different for this camp or is it the same training partners and, and everything else in terms of the structure of this camp? Yeah, you know, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, I have been doing a little bit uh, extra running and, um, and, and cycling. Um, uh, we Out here in Vegas, we have a, a, a cool little uh, hike. It's like a five-mile 
in and out hike. It's called Gold Strike, and it's about 1,500 feet elevation that it, it drops and, and climbs back up. So it's it's quite the hike. Uh, it takes about I can run it in about an hour and 10 minutes. But I was doing that like every Saturday as like an extra cardio. And then uh, they closed that because Vegas gets real hot and uh, people have, you know, I don't know if anybody has died, but uh, I know a lot of people have it had have gotten lost, dehydrated, had to get rescued out there, which it's not the craziest hike, but, you know, if you're a normal person going out there and you don't pack enough water, it's 100 degrees out, you know, it can it, it can it can wear on you. But so they closed that, and so I bought a, a new bike, and uh, I've been cycling. So, uh, uh, but I just enjoy that kind of stuff. I enjoy doing those, like, cardio things, you know, I'm like kind of like Paul Felder likes to do, wants to do a triathlon and was getting ready for a triathlon. Uh, I kind of – take a, a similar uh, approach to things, especially with my cardio and my conditioning. I feel um, when you really uh, put the hours in on long runs, long uh, bike riding, it can really translate really well into fighting. Um, I mean, even look at Paul Felder on that short notice against uh, uh, RDA. I mean, he, he hadn't even be, he hadn't been in the gym for like three months. He was just getting ready for a triathlon and his cardio was, you know, was up to par, you know, so he lasted, was able to last the whole fight and he looked good in there for not being able to train at a gym for a few months. So, um, you know, I took a little page out of his book, and uh, uh, but also it's something that I've, I've enjoyed over the years as well. So I just wanted to add a little bit more of that in and uh, uh, for this camp, and I've had so much time, so I was able to do that. And and I'm sure it helps with the weight cut as well, right? The fact that you're doing so much cardio, it probably makes the you know the pounds come off a little bit easier. Yeah, 100. percent You know, people are like you know people start to uh, well, especially fighters. You know, you go train, you come home and chill, and then you go train again, you come home and chill, unless you have a full time job or whatever, like. Most of us usually do, but being in the UFC, it's easy. I can, you know, I can get my rest in between practices. I don't have to go jam out to a job and and, and do that right now. So um, for me, uh, when you're sitting at home, it's hard not to look in the kitchen every every ten seconds and be like, oh, I want to go eat something. I want to go do this and do that. And so uh, doing these long things, like on Saturday, I went and did a we did our little fight simulation we do every Saturday leading up to a fight, you know, three five minute rounds of just hard hard pace, uh, cardio conditioning, not sparring, but like just real hard cardio conditioning in a cage, um, uh, realistic things that you'd be doing in a fight. And I would do those on Saturday just to get our bodies kind of accustomed to that. And then, uh, after that, I just bought my new bike and I wanted to give it a shot and I kind of just didn't have anywhere specific. I was going, I just started riding and ended up riding 70 miles and it was like five and a half hours. So, uh, but that's five and a half hours. I'm not sitting in my house thinking about eating food. I'm burning calories the entire time. I don't know how many cal- calories I probably burned that day, but uh, uh, it's just nice when you're doing things like that. It keeps you out of the house, keeps you away from food, and uh, and even if it's healthy food, like you know, if I'm just sitting around, I just people get bored, and they want to eat, and I'm a big guy, so keeping the weight off, uh, uh, using doing that cardio definitely helps that for sure. And also on your card, uh, the main event is the guy that I know you've trained with a bit, uh, Dan Ige. Do you get to work with him at all, or is he kind of doing his own thing for for this main event fight against the zombie? Yeah, he's got his own thing kind of going on with his sparring, um, and uh, we've always kind of had uh, separate schedules a little bit. Uh, I would see him in uh, extreme um, pro practices that I was there, um, but uh, you know he's got a main event going against a zombie, so he's really got to be specific training. You know, he's at a point in his career where you know he's top eight. You know, if he beats a, a guy like Korean Zombie, he could be in the in the mix for a title shot. You know, sometime in the future. So uh, I get it for him. He wants to be as on top of it as possible and get the most uh realistic training partners for that specific guy um i think i you know i could be similar to the zombie you know i'm I'm one of those guys that does nothing but forward pressure and is willing to just kind of chuck and kind of i'm kind of a wild wild guy myself but uh uh you know you got to be specific and you got to be uh you got to start being selfish in this game you know it's uh you got to be selfish when you get to these spots where you know there's a big money on the line for these guys i don't know how much danny Gay makes but he's making more than i am and and my check to win is you know is substantial compared to losing. So uh, if it's big enough for me to be have to be greedy or not greedy, but uh, to be selfish about it, then I know for him it's got to be you know it's definitely got to be something that's on his mind. You know he wants to make sure every every practice he's going to and he's and everything he's doing is catered to to fight this guy. So uh, uh, yeah, I see him every once in a while. We've given I mean we've given each other you know countless rounds in the in the past. So uh, but yeah, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have a lot of guys on that card. It's me. Uh, Dan Egan, also Casey O'Neill, she fought me and her fought on the same card last time, uh, and then she's fighting again this time. So we, it's kind of like a ritual now. Like we, we both won our fights last time, and we both kind of called out how we were going to win, you know, to our coaches the night before. And then uh, so we're fighting on the same card this time, which is uh, 
you know, I'm not superstitious or anything, but, you know, she was like, you know, kind of brings a little bit of, uh, of the team camaraderie, uh, uh, back to the, uh, to the card for us. How's this fight playing out on June 19th? Uh, you know, I, I feel that this card or this fight is, 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 is going to play out. I think he's going to obviously want to pressure. He, he seems like a guy that wants to pressure, but I like to pressure as well. So I think we're both going to, uh, you know, come out and, and try to, uh, get the center of the ring. And I think, um, uh, I think I'm just going to be too much pressure for him. My cardio is going to be just too in shape. And, uh, I think my wrestling, my grappling is going to, uh, overtake him and, uh, make him work harder. And so when he gets back to his feet, he's not going to be as good on the feet or I'll be able to catch him in the seven ground. I imagine the plan is to keep, you know, active this year, just, you know, try and, cause you, you got this fight here. I imagine you want decent turnaround, maybe three fights in for the year. Is that kind of what you're looking at? Oh yeah. I mean, I think that's uh, ideal. Um, obviously in a calendar year, uh, it hasn't been like that, but uh, for this fight will be three days before the anniversary, one year anniversary since I fought Sean. So it'll be That's three. Right. It'll be three fights within a year, and shoot, my last from between Sean and Nate Woods, or uh, uh, from Sean Woodson and Nate Land, where it was like I think like seven or eight months in between. But that was because I had you know I had coronavirus, I had an infection on my eye, I had a ear, you know I had a bunch of stuff going on, and so that's why there was a long layoff. But even then. Uh, I will still be able to get three fights in a in an actual year. So uh, that's all kind of how I want to be. Three, four fights. You know, as long as I'm healthy. You know, I'm 31 years old. I want to, you know, kind of bang these out and, uh, and and just keep the ball rolling. You know, there's uh, there's only so much time in uh, in someone's career in uh, in fighting period, let alone being in the UFC. So you got to when, when you're here, you got to make it count. So that's what I want to do. And then I know uh, we're not that close to summer, but are you going to be going back home at all anytime soon back to Washington State? Oh, for sure, yeah. Actually, um, it's kind of nice because me and my wife are taking off to Alaska for five days. Uh, oh, awesome. On Tuesday. On Tuesday. So even though it's like my fight's only like a, like a month away, uh, I've been, I'm so ready for this fight. It's ridiculous. But it's kind of like a, uh, a mandatory recovery time for myself. You know, I got to force myself to do that. Otherwise, I won't take a day off. And so... Uh, for me physically, it's going to be nice just to go out there. Her brother lives out uh, in Alaska and has a fishing charter, so we're going to go hang out with them for a few days. But after my fight, we're going to go back home for, I think, like 11 days uh, and just kind of enjoy the Pacific North, the Pacific Northwest and, uh, and my family and her family and, and just kind of get out of the Vegas heat for a little bit. Good stuff, man. So how long are you going to Alaska for? Just like a week or how long? Uh, we It's going to be five days total, but we're only going to be there for three, four days. We're traveling there for one day, but we're going to be there you know, in the afternoon, and then uh, we're going to be there three, four days, and then we come back uh, uh, Sunday morning. So we go from basically Tuesday to Sunday, and we're there Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, no, no my bad. My bad. We, uh, uh, it's Wednesday's traveling and Sunday's traveling. And gotcha. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so just a little like recovery period and kind of recharge the yeah. batteries and then go full force into this fight, right? So. Yeah. Well, actually, we had we had planned that before right? we even had a fight. So, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say because I I wouldn't imagine you're booking this in the middle of camp, but it was just one of those things where you had to take the fight, right? So. Yeah. If if I was fighting, um, if I was fighting the weekend before, we might have moved it around. Or I might not have gone. Maybe. Maybe. I mm-hmm. mean, honestly, for me. I fought Sean Woodson on three days notice. So, yeah. you know, it's nothing new to me. Uh, been there, done that. And that's not something that uh, will bother me mentally. Honestly, it's going to be something that helps me out in the long run, I think. Julian, always appreciate the time, man. Uh, it's UFC Fight Night coming up here June 19th. Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? I'll give you the last word. Well, yeah, obviously, um, you know, if you want to hit me up on Instagram, it's probably the best way to reach out to me. Uh, just Julian underscore Rosa. Um, I don't want to get into sponsorships because I'll forget a million of them. Uh, <laughs> But I will. Uh, I always like to uh, shout out my my uh, my management, um, Iridium Sports Agency, and my manager Jason House, because without them, I want to be here. Um, they've really set this up uh, fantastic for me. Uh, I, obviously, the coronavirus kind of helped me out, I think, as well, because you know uh, people falling out of cards, and I was able to get that spot. But uh, without him, I wouldn't have gotten that spot. So uh, with a combination of things uh, and my you know having a fantastic manager, uh, that's what got me back here. And so I always want to shout him out. And then uh, obviously you, James, for having me on. 